All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone to the third and final stakeholder meeting for the 17th Street Reinvestment Study. I'm Zach Pietmeyer, project manager with CCDC, and again joined by the folks with Cushing Terrell, who will help lead today's discussion. Uh, our focus today will be primarily to review and prioritize the recommendations for future investment by CCDC and or our public agency partners, which will hopefully help uh, catalyze, uh, incentivize private investment in the area. So um, Dave, do you wanna go ahead and share your screen? You bet, let me get this thing going here. Okay. How are you doing, Kevin? Sorry, it's okay. All right. Okay, thanks. Let's jump right into it. A um, little quick agenda here for what we're going to cover today. Um, we'll do a really, really high level recap of our second meeting um, and then do another high level uh, cover of the recommendation overview, which turns uh, itself into sort of an implementation matrix. Uh, just really the, kind of the basics so we can get right into that third point there, which are catalytic recommendations. Uh, we'll describe what those are on a second and then we'll be able to stop and and uh, after we go through those see what everybody uh, thinks about those and have give everybody a chance to respond um, and uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about next steps Dave uh, this is Zach again you mind if I jump in real quick um, we're hoping that everybody who's on the meeting at a computer can uh, enter their first and last name just so we have a good understanding of who's here. Um, it's pretty simple. All you got to do is find your picture on the Zoom screen, right? Click on it and click rename and that'll allow you to type in your first and last name. And then if anybody is joining via phone, which it doesn't appear that there are, um, just try to introduce yourself um, prior to speaking so we know who's here. Okay, thanks. All right, so uh, first thing we had uh, we had a good meeting back I think um, last month I believe it was for basically to hold a stakeholder preference survey for uh, those in attendance to uh, cover a couple basic uh, basic things that we had heard in the first meeting when we had just an open open house roundtable what the uh, what the challenges and opportunities were out there uh, introduce some of the existing conditions and had folks respond to those so in the second meeting we had a preference survey that was a live poll. And uh, we, we got some good feedback and got some better direction on where to go for, for this meeting and for those catalytic projects and our recommendations that we'll talk about here in a second. But just a really, really high level in general for the study area, uh, placemaking uh, was, was the number one priority. Public safety was right there with it. Um, pretty much um, the, the corridors, the main corridors, only a couple of them, but they were all fairly evenly prioritized when we asked which places should do you think investment should occur first. Uh, it was it was a couple of them maybe stood out with 17th Street, uh, but otherwise they were they were pretty much uh, uh, let's 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 look at everything fairly evenly. Um, and then within those corridors, streetscaping was always the number one priority, getting them to the standards of the downtown manual, et cetera, those kinds of things. Uh, with with the uh, with the idea of installing or improving street lighting um, was was the highest priority among you know, smaller subsection of streetscaping. Um, and, and that was really in all quarters as well. Uh, continuing on with, with incentives, we were able to ask a little bit about what incentive programs or packages might be more um, more or less uh, interested or, or, or of higher preference. And really there was majority support on, on all kinds of incentives, which include, you know, land use regulatory code, development code, um, incentives to, to increase height, bonus, uh, density, floor area ratio increases, uh, and parking. Um, but even though those were all widely accepted as possible uh, incentives, not for blanket, uh, the whole study area, just for specific areas and upon a, almost a case by case basis. Um, and then, uh, you know, continuing on with, with, with what happens where future land uses was was asked about and mixed use was was the number one, um, but asking about you know is this an area that's going to transition into place with more residential, yes, but in certain places and in certain ways and um, um, depending on where you are uh, in the study area, and there was a little bit of variation between them, um, but but you know effectively 
support for that transition into more of an urban neighborhood was was there. And asking about public amenities, which one would be which ones would be the most uh, preferential for for folks across this this area, um, you know, any place, any small place where people can gather to really increase that vibrancy, to get people to stop instead of just pass through uh, urban plaza, small public gathering spaces, uh, build upon the ones that are there. I like the, um, you know, the fallen firefighters memorial and other places. What, what can we do to build upon that and squeeze in at every opportunity, some kind of place for people to gather? Um, you know, you got the green belt going through. How do we get folks to stop and, 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 see, and see this place as something else? Of course, land use is a big part of that, um, but but it all obviously connects together. Um, okay, uh, high level recommendation overview. So so there's kind of two parts of our recommendations here, uh, based on what we've heard. There's there's these high level recommendations, which are organized into a matrix with uh, broad categorical improvements that go into specific projects that are sort of represented here. Uh, there's a number of different categories that we'll, we'll, we'll talk, talk about here in a second. Um, that's the framework for for the, for for um, all the recommendations. It's a full list. Um, there's about 19 or 18 separate um, ideas. Each one has might have multiple projects, but but that's the full list. The catalytic rec recommendations we'll talk about next are really the implementation flow of how some of those projects might come in together. To uh, to serve as the things that can be done, you know, sort of sooner than later, and with with higher impact um, than longer term priorities. Uh, so so looking at these, the recommendations formed from our three part input process, which was looking at existing conditions and assessing them, uh, asking the, this group here, the stakeholders, what they thought at, through the input sessions, and then also reviewing the current plans and studies for the area, which includes infrastructure uh, and and also physical, you know, physical studies for for future things in the area. So those were our three ways we came up with some of these ideas. This is this is a geographic representation of the table I'll show next. There's streetscaping projects, obviously. Um, we've we've had some ideas about uh, uh, anchors and focal points within the right of way to to guide future mobility, pedestrian level types of movement across the space and to to install cultural or public art features where possible, build upon the ones that are there, like the bridge, firefighters memorial, and some of the history and heritage behind the powerhouse. So again, going through these at a high level, there are four categories, work, connectivity, mobility. Um, a lot of that's focused on non-motorized, but there is, it's also included vehicle mobility and different potential transportation configurations and road configurations in the future, um, utilities and infrastructure, uh, incentives, which really are more partner agencies, you know, C CCDC would support some of those types of things. Likewise with land use more of a, this is what we've heard, Reinvestment and redevelopment occurs across the whole spectrum of things, and land use is one of them. So we wanted to make sure that those things are pointed out in this in the study as well, um, kind of as a record of what we heard. So with that said, going into our catalytic recommendations, which there's basically four of these, and I think I'll what we'll do is kind of go through these. Um, Try to explain how how it worked and where it came from, and then we'll go into uh, the bigger group and ask folks how they respond to it. And we've got a number of of things that we can we can talk to, um, but hopefully you all just have plenty of things to to give us feedback on. You know, the main thing is, did we get these right? Is this realistic? Is it consistent with goals and vision? Um, but really, these are the these are the four catalytic big moves that this study um, is the outcome of some of the input of the study. So, the first one, and Zach, Chris, and team, as Angela, stop me at any time if I'm if I'm forgetting something. But the first one, and there really, there's not a there's not a one through four. It's a, you know they're all fairly even. It's just let's set up, let's set up the, the projects as as a uh, with these four. Um, these four things. So improving the 17th Street corridor. It's the name of the study, 17th Street Reinvestment Study. And obviously that was, you know, came out as a priority. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, we've heard, um, you know, create a safer experience. Uh, so let's think about not just street skipping, but what happens on either end. So creating anchors, which anchors are um, not necessarily, you know, uh, private developed landmarks. It's more of things within the right of way 
that are uh, opportunistically can help us visually or from a connectivity standpoint anchor either end of 17th. So they're pedestrian scaled landscape type features. They're in the right of way. You already kind of have some at the firefighters memorial with the flags that does help you as you're, you know, kind of coming out through the area, either from the green belt or from the neighborhood on shoreline or otherwise. So let's let's orient pedestrians and focus attention to the streetscape on 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 the west side would be some kind of addition or, or you could see some examples of what those features are, um, public art, other types of things, historical markers, all the things that are kind of already there. Let's build upon those. Meanwhile, there's an opportunity to strengthen that connection across from 17th across shoreline um, with certain types of uh, of infrastructural crossing facilities, stripes, you know. The, signals those kinds of things we heard that that would be important getting people across the site uh, across the area would be important and that's a, a connection that's kind of there but could be reinforced on the on the um, east side there's if if you if we there is streetscaping between them there's an opportunity there there's some right away there to potentially do a similar thing to anchor that visually um, and perhaps include some some sort of heritage features or public art there that reflect some of the history of the city through the powerhouse and other places. So uh, that's kind of what this what this get, gets into. Um, there's some other pieces, perhaps traffic calming through this crossing area. Um, and, and as you'll see, the, some of these other projects lend themselves to how once 17th, uh, whether through land use change or otherwise, is more of an attention focus. There might be other ways to get to it from uh, from other places. So we'll talk about that one in a second too. All right, number two, uh, or letter B, however we call it, this is kind of what I was just talking about. Um, we were tasked with what other ways can we think about the transportation grid, both motorized and non-motorized. So um, this, this is a little bit of a legacy from the uh, shoreline framework, uh, but acquiring and realigning some right of way uh, and, and par potential parcel boundaries or easements to, to change the right of way to complete what, what we call the spa street connection or extension. Um, and then another connection potentially between 17th and, and shoreline here uh, using and taking advantage of being opportunistic about some of the easements and challenges that exist there uh, with the power lines and other other types of overhead uh, equipment there, so so this is just kind of focusing on that, and we're not really thinking to, just just kind of thinking a little bit about how one of these might be vehicular, uh, and one of these might just be pedestrian and 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 bicycle and ped and walking plaza, and there's an opportunity there to create a whole plaza there uh, with uh, with whatever kind of tables, equipment, shade, features, resting, respite areas uh, for, for folks uh, to, to have there. So that would be acquisition. It would be designing and constructing a special streetscape. So one that might not conform to the other uh, typologies in the manual, but something new, uh, allowing for some flexibility there. Um, and then activating it with public art murals other things that we see in other parts of downtown Boise that really have worked in the past. So we'd work with you know the ownership of those properties to, to help understand how that might work in the future. Okay, uh, the next the next uh, two or three are kind of related. Um, this is one that we've 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 heard loud and clear. We didn't didn't you know have to make really any of this up. It's just kind of a matter of what what's happening out there. So that's to support the city uh, to pursue land use and regulatory incentive packages. Um, what we, we heard is across the connector here, a lot of those packages were helpful into helping turn those into uh, really citywide amenities in the, in the healthcare and uh, uh, low income housing projects that we see across the street that were able to be done through those packages. So um, because we're just across the connector and there's other characteristics of, of this area here along the connector that might lend themselves to those things. So uh, this is just a this is just a uh, kind of a notice that to support those things, um, but the preference is for the ownership to pursue this with the city of Boise uh, themselves. Uh, we did talk in the report a little bit about how uh, you know some of the zoning um, and, and the Boise development code changes that might be um, applicable, but, but don't really recommend anything particular, just just that it was something that we heard that would really help help revitalize this area and, and, and support reinvestment, which is what we were tasked to do here. 
And uh, again, this last piece, supporting redevelopment that contributes to the, the tax increment uh, increase. And we, we know we have a lot of publicly and quasi-publicly owned property that doesn't necessarily contribute to the taxes. So what are the things that, that we could do collaboratively um, and that the city could do that, that CCDC could support to make those things redevelop in a way that would support district-wide and city really neighborhood-wide um, uh, increment increases. So, so this thing can actually turn into what is envisioned ultimately, which is a new urban neighborhood near downtown. <clears throat> so, so that's that's the the sort of the bookend of of uh, of that that framework there. Um, and that that obviously streetscaping and 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 including public amenity space, plazas, art, all kind of ties together to provide the whole you know the whole idea, the whole vision for this study. And that's those are the the kind of four kind of solid big moves that we heard. So um, that's uh, that's that's us presenting the the basics of those ideas. Um, now, like I said, I think our our task is to ask you, how does that sound? Did we get it right? How far off are we? What did we miss? And um, is it is some of these things possible? So, does anybody have any opening comments on those on those ideas? Dave, this is Zach. I'll I'll start off here real quick. And so there there was a number of things that folks presented that would be uh, worthwhile investments and in, throughout the study area. And we tried to capture most of those in that, that list that Dave showed earlier that was you know one to 19, but obviously we are in um, in a mode where we're trying to find the best bang for the buck, uh, the, the most in, influence in the in a, uh, quickest amount of time. And so we're looking really in the next three to five years, what, what low hanging fruit can we address that will hopefully spearhead some more investment in the area. And so, that's where the genesis was of these four four project types. They seemed like those kind of efforts out of the 19 or so that would result in that um, the quickest. So just to add that in. Dave, uh, this is Tom Repholtz. I, I own the powerhouse building. Um, the plaza, I guess the name of it, um, Kind of where would that pedestrian flow come from? Like I, I can't really redevelop my building without going through a bunch of hoops probably. Um, the Idaho Power property across the street where the substation is, I don't think that will get redeveloped soon. Um, so is that, are we thinking that across the street for me on 17th, that would be re redeveloped or you know, what what draws people to that area i guess right and and it it truly is sort of a visionary project and it's not going to happen tomorrow as we know and there's there's a couple things i guess a couple ways um to to get to that and it's hard to imagine that that something like that would and you're really referring to the I, either one of these or any, anyone in particular uh, uh, more the power line plaza yeah. uh -huh. So it, it's definitely a future, a future case, future condition. And, and this is um, something that would occur, you know, opportunistically over time with redevelopment of these sites, if you imagine a five or 10 year, 10 year vision. Um, so you're, you're, you're correct, maybe not tomorrow, but either of these things I think are, are once this area is so close to, to downtown, uh, it's, it's got the green belt, it's got the connections. Um, you know, how do we really think about the grid, the transportation grid, and follow along with our goals to break up these super blocks and work within the framework that we have to increase pedestrian mobility and increase vehicular mobility. So with those goals in mind and with redevelopment in mind, um, eventually the, the opportunity it would be missed to not necessarily, to not take, care, uh, take advantage of that, of that place that's probably very difficult to, to build and change. Uh, because of the power lines, so that's that's kind of how we were thinking about it. Is is um, where where can we be opportunistic about this in the future, knowing that this is a five or ten year down the road thing, um, and and maybe there's an interim for that 
plaza. Uh, maybe it's a place for, um, you know, maybe not w both ways through for, for vehicles, but some other way to, to orient I don't know, parking and there's an interim solution there that could lead to this in the long term. Um, obviously to get to get people out there to get you know rooftops you'd have to do pretty dense urban redevelopment as you're considering but um, if we if we imagine that some of these ideas will work then then um, if you have some activity happening to to the west and if you have um, you know potentially streetscaping and things occurring on 17th and maybe eventually some of these some of the land use is uh, changing, um, then, you know, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity or, or a missed opportunity to not provide some kind of urban type of, of plaza there. Uh, is, any, anyone else have anything to add to that? Is, is that it? So that is a, a, a right of way that's for car traffic too, or just pedestrian? So this, the, the power line, it, ultimately long term, I think our team's vision was that are just realistically that that wouldn't be a through a through way for car traffic um it would also i forgot to mention it's it's to to follow some of the uh, momentum wow. within, within the city it could be an opportunity to install green stormwater infrastructure uh, with the flow that the direction of flow that we see through through that it could be also just a kind of a, a repository for for stormwater in a way that does does what we want it to do instead of just going into underground culverts and all that all that stuff so but no i don't think it would be a vehicle thoroughfare right right team tom uh, this is zach just to clarify it is not a public right away it's currently privately held by uh, idaho power and uh, the owner at 703 americana and so it would be um, definitely a conversation that both of those folks would have to be involved in I think Idaho Power is on the call today. Maybe they can weigh in. But I think really what we were thinking is we, we had heard from Idaho Power that undergrounding those power lines is going to be very difficult. Those are transmission lines. And so they're likely not going anywhere. And so what happens with the space underneath? It can't be developed or redeveloped. So is there other ways to make the highest and best use out of that space knowing those power lines will be there for a very long time? So having that conversation with Idaho Power, are they, you know, are they willing to work with us on on things like using that as a green stormwater area, or potentially allowing um, bikes and pedestrians to travel through the area to connect to shoreline? So it's just trying to optimize what's out there and, and make the highest and best use of what we have. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Can Can I ask a question about the powerhouse? To you, probably Tom, but. Um, what what right now is that being used for, or what is the proposed plan for that? Is that something that is a that would be a community center, uh, a gathering place for events, or is it being used now for just commercial use? Yeah, it's I operate a real estate brokerage out of it. Could could you hear that, Rick? Yes, I got that. Thank you, Tom. I guess one other question I had, Dave and Zach, um, I don't think the owner of, of some of the properties are here um, that are affected by the Spa Street extension or that uh, power line plaza. Um, is there a way for them to kind of chime in at a later date or how does, how does that process work? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that. So this is just us presenting these recommendations today. We we're going to ask here at the end of the meeting that um, folks that are on the meeting take a, a little while to contemplate what we're discussing now and provide any comments back and we'll also send uh to the larger stakeholder group including those that are not here kind of that same information of here's here's what we're proposing out there um give us your thoughts and feedback so uh, we'll give a couple weeks uh, of time to let folks kind of weigh and mull those over and hopefully they'll get back to us so dave and zach uh this is mark miller can you guys hear me yes thumbs up so we're we're north and so if I look at what your proposal is, which generally speaking, I kind of get where you're going and I like it, but 
you're not cre you're not really creating access to the neighborhood that's pretty exciting. You're trying to build a neighborhood and then keep it everything else the same. Americana, I'm not seeing any plan for lighting, any, you know, gardenscape, anything like that. I'm not seeing, I may be missing it. And then when you go, I think it's north, up by the skate park, you got this skate park that the city and private money put a lot of money into, but there's nothing up in that area to try to say, hey, welcome to this part of the city. So you're asking the, you're asking the consumer to drive through something that no reinvestment on the city's part, enter this neighborhood that could turn out to be really cool. Granted, I, go, I know it's over 10 years. And then you're going to exit into Ann Morrison, which is awesome. But if you don't fill, if you don't fill out both sides, you know, both sides of this neighborhood, you're, you're not really cleaning it up that much. And I don't see any work being done north of what you're talking about. And I think that it's important that that gets incorporated in here. I'm not talking new roads and stuff, but it needs to be cleaned up. It needs to be inviting all the way through that on Americana. Great point. Thank you for that feedback. Yeah, and, I, I and would obviously, Zach, I'm partial. So people will come back and say, well, he's partial because he owns some of those buildings. But, you know, which is true, but we're willing to invest money in the buildings. But it's got to be the whole, my opinion, it's got to be the whole thing to make it work. Right. And, and the, the recommendation, obviously, is to to update the streetscaping to, to standards on Americana throughout the whole area of, you know, our study area of that dash red line. But under, yeah, understand the gate, the kind of gateway entryway feeling. Um, and ultimately, when the properties are redeveloped or, or whatever happens in Americana is streetscaped, it's going to be quite, quite amazing. Um, yeah, you think about it, we put a new fire station in there, right? That's nice, kind of on the other side of the viaduct. We got that that skate park, which, you know, it's that that'll work itself out. But it's a great escape for these kids, and it's it's lit up right, it's done right, and then. It just looks to me like it's empty for what a block and then you start talking about doing some work again and i think that needs to be incorporated in that day so I, I think what you mean by streetscaping is the right lighting you know be it flower beds whatever i don't know but some some artwork tied into that yeah i i think the the that's a great point about the end building on the energy that's there and maybe maybe trying to focus some other additional some of those, uh, yeah, some of those landscape type features in the right of way that do attract attention and build, build upon the energy of the skate park and that that kind of thing and focus more towards that that node and gateway. That's good. That's good input. I think there's something that could be done there. And I'm an easy lift guy, Dave. That's more that's more of an easy lift uh -huh. than maybe what Tom was bringing up on some of the right of ways you got to work on. That's just taking yeah. time and energy. That's yeah. harder. The easy lift is that entrance. I think you could do a lot of work there without having to worry about buying buildings or anything. Just Kind of cleaning that up not that it's cheap but relatively speaking it's really it's an easier lift than some of the other stuff to get cleaned up so i'm my soapbox is not done but i'm going to put it on pause for a while <laughs> thanks mark well, i would second that motion of mark what mark's talking about being at the north end as well um of the street i think that's that's really needed and I think in order to, like, like you said, in order to go to, you know, that that south end and some of the areas you want to go to, you need to make sure that people, you know, want to be able to get through there, and it looks like an area that's inviting place to go. And uh, we certainly know that's a concern. Having Corpus Christi House right in that area, that is a problematic. Um, that's a that's a real um, issue to have to deal with because a lot of people don't want to go through there right now but we want to do our part to, to try to make it that way so just for my own clarification mark when you say cleaning it up you mean hi Shirley. hi um you mean like landscaping um more lighting um i don't know park benches something just making it look more inviting yeah i yeah i'm i'm a you know i'm a glasses half full guy i think kind of the Somebody, you know, Rick brought up the, the Corpus Christi. I think that kind of gets itself worked out the next few months, kind of a long-term plan. I hope it does. Um, so that will naturally kind of take place, you know, but from the city's perspective, which they're playing a part in that too, but really the city's perspective is more what you said. Hey, how do you clean the sidewalks up, make benches, you know, light poles with, flower, you know, with hanging flowers certain times of year, whatever, all the cool stuff you see in the city, these cities, that they just make it more inviting and 
And it's like, you know, so when, you know, you know, Mary and Joe drive down the street, they're new to Boise. They, they feel comfortable driving through that versus driving through this going, well, there's somebody telling me to go here. And then all of a sudden I'm in the next part of the, you know, the city, you know, we see this in, in other cities that we have investments in where, you know, you're two blocks away from a pretty plighted area, then you walk into this great area, but it's undervalued in the great area because people have to go through that to get it. And I just, I, I just think that based on the idea that you guys have about trying to, you know, take a big bite of this apple, don't miss the little stuff. And that just to me, like we're missing just, it's not free. I get it. It's not cheap, but it's, it's the little low hanging fruit that you can build on, you know, what they're doing, uh, you know, what you've already done on the other side of the freeway underneath the freeway. So that's what I mean, Shirley. Yes. I actually really like that idea. Yeah. Thank you. More on your plate, Dave. Zach, sorry. Hey, Dave and Zach, this is Derek O'Neill with River Shore Development. And I, I just maybe had a couple of clarification questions on the first one is improving the streetscapes. Um, do you actually mean getting them built or creating streetscapes? <laughs> it shows high priority, but it says with development. So that to me contemplates that until you get development, you don't get a streetscape. I, I can take a stab at that one, Derek. Um, this is Zach. So uh, streetscaping all of 17th Street will be uh, a major undertaking. That's, that's a lot of uh, length of street. And so we can approach it a couple of ways. And that is kind of one of the discussion points we want or discussion items we wanted to have today is we can come in and basically fill in gaps so that there's at least a complete sidewalk network and perhaps fill in some lighting gaps where we have dark areas just to get some some minimal level of service in play, knowing that at some point in the future that will have to be torn out. And so wanted to get the stakeholders impression of what what's 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 preferred to wait to do it right the first time or at least get that minimum level of service in now. Um, knowing that it may have to change in the future when when there is funding available to do the streetscape right. I, I would prefer lighting right away. Um, I'm not sure if it would have helped on Sunday, but we had a dumpster set on fire across the street on 17th. Um, so fire trucks came, police came. <clears throat> So I think increased security would be a high priority for us. So just, you know, this may be way down into the weeds, but what that looks like is a project that installs some overhead lighting, um, more like what you would find in the suburban areas of, of Boise, not like downtown where you have historic street lights because we don't have the sidewalk infrastructure in place with furnishing zones, light sidewalks, curb gutter everywhere to place historic lights, at least in their ultimate location. So it may be more of pick off the dark areas and, and add 40 foot tall overhead luminaires for now, um, but ultimately long-term we could come back and replace them. It's just a, a two-step process. I, I would agree. I think 17th needs lighting I think you make the better, maybe the one-time lighting investment on Americana, like Mark asked. <clears throat> that could be more permanent, I would think. I would agree with that up in the northern area, because a lot of that's going to be you know, your main street running along Americana. I don't think you have to tear that out, Zach, if you do it right. Uh, or if somebody tears it out because they're doing redevelopment, they got to replace it. But uh, I was, if somebody said there was a fire in a dumpster, I think once a week we have a fire behind our buildings too. So some lighting would probably, I don't know if it would help or not, but I think it might do that by us. I have another question, Zach or Dave, I guess if you go to the incentive piece, this is Derek O'Neill again. Um, it talks about some potential amendments to standards. 
and uh, they're all medium priority. It seems to me that those are things that take time and energy, but don't cost a lot. And so if we're trying to encourage development, instead of them being a medium uh, priority, it seems like that should be a high priority. Great, great feedback. This, this other... is Tom Rebholtz again. Um, on uh, item 14B on the incentives, the uh, parking district, is that, can you kind of walk through what that means? And then um, if there's a way to kind of utilize this process, since, since uh, ACHD is on a couple of the items to maybe change parking on 17th. I could at least start with what the what that was alluding to is uh, as the area urbanizes and as, as development occurs from east towards the west to revisit or to support revisiting the parking districts, the overlay districts, uh, and, and in the report we've provided just a comparison of what the standards, minimum standards would be between those, um, and that would act as an, as an incentive to uh, to development. So that's what that that P three to P two refers and, to. Hey, hey, Dave, can you do me a favor and just after this call, uh, just send out some more information on what P two and P three entail? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Sorry, what was the other the other question? Oh, I forgot it. So oh, just in, in our neighborhood, um, it's unlimited parking besides the city code of 72 hours. And uh, just in my mind, some low hanging fruit would also be to put in some parking restrictions. Um, there's several businesses that are blocked where there's loading and unloading going on. Um, I think that'd be kind of easy to do without Mm -hmm. and that would be under the city's purview i imagine does anybody from the city uh have any shed some light onto the process for for that occurring i, I think it's also ac or ACHD, achd as well yeah it's it's been looked at by the city i don't know um We've had extensive conversations about it. We, we, you have to kind of demonstrate um, a need for it. I know that there's ongoing kind of discussion about studying the area for future development. I don't know if Sean's on, if he wants to say more about it. Yeah, well, I know that some of the stakeholders on the call have uh, been part of those discussions, but um, I think it's worth uh, continuing to uh, put on the map as far as um, you know, if it's appropriate, then how, how do we go about implementing it? Um, I think it's a worthy option to consider. And I, I think it's uh, as similar as we've approached some of the other support and collaboration items in this plan, that could be something that we, you know, as far as recording that, that input in this study could be part of that. Zach, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. And just to add, um, I think there was a note that maybe ACHD would get involved and in, they're not here to defend themselves, but I'm, I'm fairly certain they would not want to um, participate in any sort of parking regulation unless there was a, a known safety issue from like a user perspective, like traffic or sidewalk or bicyclist perspective. So I think they would defer that to the city. So Zach, so, so Zach, this is, this is Captain Paul Birch. Just uh, we just did a uh, thing with the city and ACHD and we posted, uh, I'll tell you, it was uh, Dorian Abs, and we did some zone parking around there because some of the businesses needed relief from people parking and staying there long term. And uh, it took a little bit of time, but we did get it done. We it's a uh, Dorian Abs now has loading zones. Uh, we didn't put any time parking in here, which I think, uh, honestly, the uh, two hour timed. Uh, I think you could change it just by the actually outlying outlying lane. 
how, anyway, how you do the parking on 17th Street. Uh, if you did the, the actual parking spots slanted, um, ultimately what I think everybody's looking for is, is a time zone. His time zones really do curtail people staying long term in the areas. It, get, it actually gives um, parking and police uh, the ability to actually go in and deal with some of the issues that I think 17th Street has been seeing. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Andrew at Idaho Power. Can you all hear me? Yes. Um, so on the power line, what do you call it? Power line pathway? Um, trying to find it here. So Idaho Power has easements for the transmission lines going into the substation. But a big part of that would be cutting off some of our fee-owned land for that empty parking lot that we have there. Uh, what have you guys done as far as, I mean, this seems very preliminary at this point, but, but what would you propose for an exchange? Uh, you know, as I know power would be really giving up a lot of space there. Um, you know, would you want to do a, a like kind exchange, a, a fee? own property exchange, uh, we would probably be opposed protecting our interests of granting an easement <clears throat> that would limit our capability to use the land as it is and how we prefer to keep using it. So yeah, that's those are things that, you know, from an Idaho power impact standpoint, I, I have some concerns about. Andrew, this is Zach. Thank you for um, sharing that feedback. And I think it would, would go without question. Our not our intent is to not make Idaho Power whole. Like whatever we propose there, we are assuming that it would allow uh, Idaho Power to continue doing operations and business as it normally would. Um, just keeping in mind that long term, as the area redevelops, we know that that those facilities will be there. And so are there ways we can elevate that space to be more than just power lines over bare ground? Um, are there, and it, it may not be everything that we proposed, we kind of aimed high, but are there things that Idaho Power would allow um, the city of CCDC or others to uh, partner with them on to make that a, a higher and better utilized space, knowing that we're we're going to run out of spaces like this in the future. Um, so kind of at the low end is, is would Idaho Power entertain allowing uh, green stormwater infrastructure? So um, some sort of swale feature that would maybe mitigate stormwater issues on 17th Street, not necessarily inviting the public in that space, but you know, pulling double duty as a utility quarter and perhaps stormwater. And so I think back to your original question is, would there be a trade or compensation? And that's, I, I can't commit to anything, at least from CCDC's perspective, but there's that's definitely part of the discussion. Um, and yes, definitely something we would we would try to work with Idaho Power to make, like as I said before, make them whole. Yeah, I appreciate the comment, but that we, were, we were hoping that we would get to that. And uh, so you mentioned, you know, just easements. It'd be great, yeah, to just get commentary on what absolutely it would not work, or is impossible, or you know, is it is it a portion of the site? Maybe it's not the whole the whole you know easement. Maybe it's just a piece. Um, but uh, if there's any other, if you have any comments on on you know what what's a no fly for that one? Well. I mean, I, I get where y'all are coming from, and it seems like a natural choice to want to, um, you know, have multi uses of that space. But, you know, I'm looking at our easement mapping right now, and, um, you know, we don't have easements on our own property to encumber our own property, right? So it's operational use, it's in our rate base. Uh, we use it to serve customers. And, um, you know, uh, you know, we also use it, it, it isn't just bare ground to us, it's used for parking, it's used for, um, 
you know, turning around staging areas. I mean, we could we have a lot of materials and supply chain issues that we're going through internally that, you know, we need space. And if, and I'm all about sharing, but, you know, if we're sharing for the sake of putting us ourselves in a corner where we couldn't utilize that space, how we have it today would, would not be a supported move within I know power to, to allow something like that. Like, you know, like a uh, stormwater, you know, if it's, uh, you know, if that's, that seems like a use that could potentially allow us to continue to park, you know, permeable pavers or, or, or you know, seepage beds, you know, I, I don't think we want to limit ourselves for being able to build there but uh you know kind of a license agreement that could be um you know potentially revoked in the future should we decide to do something like that would probably be uh serving the best interest of idaho power but you know certainly if you know, put a seepage bed in and pave it or pavers or something where we continue to park and stage materials yeah, yeah that could that could potentially work out Great, thanks, Andrew. This is Derek O'Neill again. I just had maybe another question or comment on maybe 6A or 6B or some of the general comments about working with ACHD, potentially acquiring right away and looking at pedestrian auto connections. Um, it seems like the quicker ACHD and those discussions happen, whether or not the, the improvements are really made, but the better as people are putting land use plans in place. And so um, I would think some of those priorities, maybe not the built, but at least the discussions to determine whether it's realistic to add bike lanes, switch one way to two way traffic, et cetera, uh, are moved up a little bit um, to, a, to a higher priority. Cause that kind of has some big implications to what some of your suggestions are. Um, and then just the, the other comment um, on the spa street connection, um, we're, we have the 1500 property across Americana Boulevard and on the plan, uh, it shows some dotted lines of where that could connect. Um, and we just want to be careful about plans being published with dotted lines that go through private property. Um, we wanna make sure that we are left developable property and we're uh, part of that process as um, discussions go. I think it's a good idea to have that connectivity. We're just uh, wanna make sure sure that um, it's clear that this isn't um, a, a location that's been decided by by people. Yeah, no, understood. And, and that's, of course, um, from previous previous planning work. Um, but, but yeah, I understand the concern there. Dave, knowing that we only have about nine minutes left, I'm wondering if we could maybe uh, ask the city some questions about the proposed um, actions over on the city owned property on the west end there. Um, I guess Shirley or Sean, any initial feedback or thoughts or reactions to um, the recommendations that we had shown for that? Yeah, Zach, I think this is uh, consistent with our long-term discussions about the future of those properties. Um, so, you know, it's it's a uh, work, we understand this is a uh, concept level document, it's a work in progress. So um, thinking about those as opportunities is I think appropriate. Um, keeping in mind, of course, that the the permanent improvements there, like the, the actual memorial itself, you know, is, um, you know, as, as, as far as I'm aware, is intended to be um, something that we Know, we're looking at a long-term location for. So I'd also be interested, of course, I think Jen Tomlinson's on the call as well. So um, anything from the park's perspective uh, that she'd like to add. Um, I know that there were some suggestions in the in the SEPTED study that Captain Birch uh, helped to head up um, that involves some of that park property there as well. Um, that might be a, a shorter term opportunity that um, someone else from the city could speak to. Uh, 
I'm sorry, Sean, this is Captain Birch. I missed, were you asking me a question? I wasn't. No, had Captain Birch, I was just acknowledging that um, the SEPTED study that you helped to, um, that you helped to move forward included some of that, um, you know, rec potential recommended improvements um, to the, to the, the green belt area, for example. Um, I, was, oh. I was speaking to that. I noticed that uh, I think Jen Thompson's still on the call. Um, I didn't know if she wanted to, to speak to any of those, um, those items that were mentioned in that SEPTA study. Sean, um, maybe while, while we're waiting on Jennifer, if she's going to speak, has, has the topic of consolidation with ACHD owned parcels been floated at the city and, um, yeah, no, that's, that's all on the long-term map. Um, those leftover parcels that were, uh, that are there because of the, the connector and, um, either whether they were used as staging areas or uh, just just uh, areas that weren't used for their intended purpose. You know, they're, they're sort of hanging out as legacy parcels and um, they've long been on the table as uh, cleanup items for the city and ACHD to um, look at how they would like to resolve. So yeah, th those are all on a radar. So it's appropriate to be thinking about those in those terms. But keep in mind, that's, that's long-term uh, long, those are long-term projects. Guys, yeah, a couple minutes left. Anybody, uh, anybody have any other thoughts on the, uh, on any of the recommendations at this point, um, before we go into a couple of next steps and things that are coming up? I just, um, I want to um, just highlight Jennifer just answered just so everyone in, in the chat. Um, I do know that the city is aware of um, the SEPTED recommendations and a lot of it was clean up of the Greenbelt area, um, more lighting, um, more planting, um, I think working on some of the restroom areas and, and I think um, Jennifer is the best one to answer all that, um, but it sounds like it, there is movement on some of that. Thank you. One of the one of the things that I think is interesting is um, marching through the diagrams for the 17th Street study and then looking at the original River Street, Myrtle Street plan. And since we're stitching those together at Americana, I, I would suggest that uh, maybe a, a, a revisiting of the River Street, Myrtle Street plan um, to, to help inform some of the recommendations might, might be of, of um, I don't know, might, it might just help help inform some of this. So, you know, we're talking about pretty topical things right now, street improvements, lighting, things of that nature for security, safety, and comfort. Um, but the River Street, Myrtle Street plan is saying four to six story buildings right up against Americana. And um, that would trickle over to the Northeast or the Northwest, I'm sorry, as you cross over Americana it might have some impacts. And then uh, the, diagrams of transportation, connectivity, things of that nature also could help kind of cross inform some of what we're going to, to Derek's point also on the spa uh, walkway or the spa connection. Sure. So, so just pointing, pointing a little bit at the, at the neighborhood plan, master plan for some validation of some of these recommendations. Is that uh, Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think we've, we've got a, we've got a pretty amazing plan that's sort of, helped launch this, you know, the, the improvements. And I, I don't think you want to totally walk away from it, even though the city's growing at lightning pace, some of the, some of the items identified in it are still pretty consistent and pretty accurate. So. Sure. 
Yep. No, we, we use a lot of that as inspiration. In, in fact, in, in our, in our plan assessment as part of the scope. So yeah, we've, we've honored that plan in its process, I think. So that's why it's, it's coming through, but yeah, that's a, that's a very good, very good point to, you know, make sure that that's clear, that that's where some of these ideas uh, came from. Yep. Thanks. Uh, Zach and team, should we, should we talk about what uh, the next couple steps are? Yeah, go ahead. I, actually, I'll toss it to either Zach or Angela for the, for the next uh, dates and things to look for um, if you have them handy. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we, we're going to try to wrap this study up and produce the final report uh, towards the end of July. And so um, to give Cushion Terrell <clears throat> a week or so to, to update it at the end, we're asking all the stakeholders to provide comments by, I believe it was Friday the 9th. Yeah, I believe that's yeah. it. So, yep. Sorry, Angela, go ahead. I was gonna say that's correct. Yeah. So then, in two weeks, we could have a um, a comment and revised draft out two Fridays from then. What's What's the best way to provide additional comments? Then, is it back to you, Zach? Yeah, go ahead. Um, Hopefully everybody's got my email. Um, that would probably be the most efficient way to get them to me. But if you want to pick up the phone and call, that works too. And then what happens after uh, after Cushing Trail works on it? What, can you describe that process, please? So it's, it's remained to be seen whether or not this is like an official report that's adopted of, in any sort. Um, probably won't be that official, but really what it is is a internal tool used by staff to help inform our uh, update to the CIP, the CCDC CIP. So um, pulling projects from this recommendation and seeing how, how and where they can fit in our five-year plan uh, would be the, the ultimate goal. Okay, uh, team, anything else? Uh, any other information we need to share? Okay, we're right, kind of right on the money. And I think we've got all of, uh, all of our high talking points covered. So really, really appreciate that everyone for joining us and sharing. Um, so everyone could look forward to, uh, pl please, yeah, provide comments if there's something else that's on your mind. Um, and uh, we'll, get, we'll get that incorporated by the 9th. All right. Thank you, everyone. All right. Appreciate it. Thank all. you. Thanks. Well okay. done.